good afternoon and welcome to Ghana Shot. Uh, we'll continue with this series on military technologies of this century, but today we'll do it with a bit of a difference. The last episode I did with Jal Narayanan, and I explained we explained to you as to what are the military technologies which are going to impact the battlefield in this century. Today I have with me Adi Achant, my old friend. And we got to talk from a totally different perspective about military technologies. So you're going to have the view of an expert, a professional military expert, and an expert of a different kind with an inquisitive mind. And who wants to know? And who, 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 who I think with this uh, whole inquisitiveness can contribute, right? So with this, uh, let me welcome Adi. Thank you, sir. Well, Good afternoon. Welcome, Adi, and welcome to the show on military technology. Uh, the series is, a, after all, the ground, the basic structure we are building on. As we grow into the uh, you know event and the series, we'll take on uh, specific uh, technologies and how they impact the battlefield. Uh, but today, you know, like we were discussing about military technology, I thought, okay, let me take you along and say what your views are and how you view this whole business of military technology and all that. Yeah, let's start. Thank you, sir, for bringing me on your platform. Uh, we've had a long association in terms of geopolitics, military affairs, and a whole lot of other things. It's a new era of learning. And uh, thank you so much for that. And thank you for... Uh, involving me in this learning process for us to understand technology with all that is happening around us, I think it's critical. So, to be honest, the first thing that I'd like to ask you, and this is something that actually uh, I think would be a great base to start with, would be what is military technology? I mean, what are the basic technology which are critical for military operations? Well, let me put it in perspective. There's no military technology. There's no technology called military technology. You know, uh, I mean, uh, the military technology as we understand it, or defense technology as we understand it, is an amalgam of various technologies put on a platform. And that platform itself is made from some fundamental technologies. Right? So, uh, does that answer your question? Or, uh, Absolutely, sir. I think that is the biggest, biggest misnomer in the world, and I think you clarified it right at the beginning. There is no separate, these things are for military and separate for civilian. Of course, certain technologies are there. Why don't we dig in and uh, look at it? I believe you've got some slides for us ready, sir. So why don't yeah. we just dig in and see what we can learn? I made this slide, and you know, when I spoke to the Northern Command on various technologies for high altitudes. So let me take this as a, a base and explain uh, the whole thing. Firstly, when you talk of military technologies, it's all applied technology. You see, it's a, you amalgamate a lot of technologies and you apply it in a particular situation. That's the way I, I can best describe what military technology is or defense technology is. Okay. And uh, let me also put it across to you. This is technologies for high altitude. But when you say technologies in aerospace or in air, it will be different. The matrix will change. If you say technology in the maritime domain, the whole thing will change. Okay. So that is something which one has to understood, uh, understand. Uh, before I dive into this uh, slide, I also would like to put across to you that any tech, any of these technologies applied in any domain need to have certain fundamental technologies. Mm -hmm. And these fundamental technologies are chemistry, you know, biology and, you know, uh, metallurgy and mechanical and, you know, those fundamental civil, those don't change. You know, people do think that, you know, just because many new technologies are coming, those are gone. You build on those technologies. These all, most of these technologies ride on those technologies. That's the first part. 
and there's one technology which i have not mentioned you know you can talk of any other technology there's a fundamental technology which revolves around design mm. you have to design these are fundamental these are soft technologies so you need to have design technologies you need to have integration technologies on a platform okay and uh, then you need to have technologies to ensure that your system is robust and can handle the battlefield or the battle conditions and it has got enough reliability and all that and and the fourth part of this thing which is amorphous you know not many of us understand this you don't understand that a military system when it enters service uh, continues in service for well over 30 40 50 years mm-hmm. i mean your father is a mic pilot no uh, he's been a pilot you you tell me when did you first hear of migs I mean, the, in the Indian Air Force, uh, 50s. Yeah, uh, when 50s. did you first hear of MiGs? Let me ask you that fundamental question. When I was born, sir, I mean, like probably the third day because they flew over my head. But okay, <laughs> yeah, it was your game game realization, yes, yeah, sir. Uh-huh. So mid, you, mid, you, mid you know, throughout your life, you heard of MiGs. So what am I trying to bring out? The MiGs are as are older than you. and they're still being flown today that is true sir the f22 came out in the late 80s and early 90s yeah so yeah so f16 you look at f16 yeah 70s right. 60s sir. 70s 60s it's still flying the same airframes and so the fundamental thing rides over time the platform remains it gets upgraded it gets maintained so those technologies are Uh, as important as anything else when you talk of uh, military technology so mm-hmm. what we have spoken is military technology is an amalgam of many technologies and it is applied on to a particular scenario that's the first thing right and the second thing is uh, 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 and with each scenario the technology is required change that's the thing which i said the third thing about military technologies is the fundamental technologies of military don't change mechanics civil Basics, electrical yeah. el- electrical i'm talking of electrical not even electronics electronics is still a, a slightly modern day subject compared to or say mid range subject you know those things don't change chemical those, those things don't change and then you have these soft technologies like design uh, you know integration uh, life enhancing technologies upgradation technologies hmm. okay so so you, i i already put three layers on to your fundamental thing now let's see how the environment and environment specific technologies how they ride into a modern platform now that's why what i'll explain with the help of the slide which i showed earlier all right so i'll take this example of technologies for high altitude you all we all discussed battlefield surveillance and, you know you need to see through uh, the enemy transparency and all that we all know you need to see something from space so you need space technology and if you have to locate something you need gis technology okay and you ha- if you don't have space you will go for drone so unmanned systems so you need that technology okay and then once you, even if you take these drones or aircraft or whatever well into the battlefield you need night vision devices they have to see at night because most battles are fought at night okay and then to really understand what this whole thing is about you need ai you yeah. need ai at the ground to build up these images over a period of time to convert it into big data and then machine learning and then you decipher what the target is all about well these are critical technologies but there are a whole lot of other technologies involved 
Because if you have to build a drone, the drone itself has about 8 to 10 technologies which come in. It will have structures, it will have metallurgy, it will have propulsion, it will have electronics, all those. So, right, but now I am talking of the key and critical technologies. Now, let us talk of reach. Reach means we have always said, oh, China has so much range. So, how do I get that range? So, I need to have propulsion technologies. And then I need to say, how do I reach, take something till there? Whether it should be manned or unmanned. Manned means the aircraft. You reach. I am not talking of enhancing range or something. A reach, battlefield reach. How far can you reach into the depth? It could be by missiles. It could be by drones. These are the three things which are available. Or guns. Isn't it? And then, to ensure that this chap reaches there, you need control and guidance accurately. Positioning. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Then once you reach on the target, you need precision. Okay. You have to be precise. That means you are talking of terminal guidance. Mm. Okay. The, 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 the vehicle should have the capability of, or the ammunition should have the capability of guiding itself onto the target and destroying it. Okay. And then that means you need seekers. Seeker technology is its own uh, story. Then, of course, you need AI, which we spoke of earlier. Mm. Then these missiles could be controlled in space, so you need space technology. Or they could re-enter uh, uh, through space, Ballistic. long range. Yeah. Okay. And then you might have, again, you go back to GIS and things like that, for acquisition of this, to build battlefield transparency, or for designation. You might have to designate the target also. So, all these technologies will come into precision. Okay, it's okay. You can fire and all, but you need to network all these. Earlier, mm -hmm. we used to say communications only. Now, you're talking of network. When you say network, what are you talking of? You need communications, very fast communication with the capability to handle huge data bandwidths. True. Mm -hmm. So, that means you are talking of fiber optics, largely fiber optics or you are talking of very, very high, super high frequencies which have that bandwidth to take data, okay. But each have their own problems, we are not discussing the technology, I am just highlighting the technologies. Then you need cyber technology. Why you need cyber technology? Either to prevent, protect your own network or Carry out offensives against the enemy network. See, many people don't understand what is cyber technology. Well, okay, let me ask you this question. What do you understand by cyber warfare? Basically, attacking a, a country's network grids to kind of... Yeah. So, basically, if you put it... Actually, what you said is right. It is net-centric warfare. Warfare yes. against enemy nets. Or whoever, target nets. Any, any kind of net. It can be... Water, yeah. electricity. Yeah, system. yeah, yeah. Basically. So that means you have to target the communication system or the end hardware, which is controlling that network or controlling a service or an activity. So you need cyber technology. Okay. Then you need AI. AI, you see, is becoming ubiquitous. Almost everywhere you need AI. Then, of course, there's a imp very important thing which many people don't understand. As you modernize, as modern weapon systems get into place, as modern uh, implements and high-tech systems come into place, they all need energy, power. So, you, you have to look at renewables very seriously. See, for example, in a submarine, if you don't have power, you can't dive. So, you need that air independent propulsion technology. Mm, mm, mm. Or you go nuclear, one of the two, which I've put. So, what is air independent propulsion? It is fuel cells. Fuel cells. Okay. Then you need space based systems. That's the latest thing. Space based means you draw energy from space. That's one way of doing it. Or you get deuterium from space for fusion, which is now on the cards. 
with whatever has happened at Livermore. Okay, then of course you can use nuclear energy, right? Then in a place like high altitude, you definitely need mobility. When you say mobility, what are you looking at? You need lightweight materials, you know, which can be carried easily, give you cross-country mobility. Right? You can't take heavy bridges there. You have to have light bridges. Then you need infrastructure. Okay, bridges. Roads, quick laying roads. Okay, that capability you need to have. It's again, this infrastructure could be brick and mortar technology, or how to lay roads is not new. You've been doing it for the past 50 years. But how can you uh, lay roads fast in adverse conditions is the issue. Then you're looking at permafrost technologies, it's a new story altogether. Then you're looking at engine technologies. Remember, uh, an uh, engine which goes into high altitude has to perform with uh, oxygen much less than what it is available here. Absolutely. Okay. The fuel might not burn because lack of oxygen there. After all, what does a vehicle do? It draws oxygen from the atmosphere and fuel from your tank and mixes and you this thing. If the oxygen is not there, the fuel won't burn. In fact, next time you go to high altitude, you see you will see a lot of vehicles giving out black smoke because mm -hmm. it's unburnt fuel coming out. Okay, so your engines have to be tuned to that; otherwise, your engine will pack up within the first three months, or you will not get power out of that engine. So, if you want to get the same power, you have to overwork that engine, which will pack up. So, you need definitive engine technologies. I mean, it is very myriad. People think, oh, we don't have technology. Though Yanks have everything, the Chinese have everything. They don't have everything. Let me assure you this. They have technologies which are suited to their terrain. But the moment you bring it here, they have a problem. In all its high altitude, you need to survive. That means individual protection in cold. That's one different story. Collective protection is different. Habitat, oxygen, all these things are required. How do you produce it there? Then you need medical technology, latest medical technology. And that is where a subject like synthetic biology comes in use. Then you're talking of weapon protection and system protection. So there's a whole lot of these technologies. You know, I've made my pitch on the kind of technologies. So what, on, sorry, yeah. please. You've touched yeah, on right. certain which are, which are, I mean, in, in, in regular lingo. And if I may, uh, of course, AI and all that stuff is pretty much everywhere. Even your iPhone uses AI to recognize who you are. That's how the face, this thing. But so the interesting thing that you've done is kind of given us an idea of uh, how they all connected. So you yep. can't do one without the other, and they're all kind of interlinked for a larger purpose. Yeah, I agree with you completely. So what happens is that when you talk a, a defense technology, you can be a very good defense technologist only if you can understand all these technologies and where they fit in and how they'll perform in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they have to be tailor-made for that particular role in battle and, and that operational terrain. You can't say, I'll go and do cycling in high altitudes. You can, but you need special, you know, not everyone yeah. can do it. Okay, so cycle technology is not good in high altitude. I mean, fundamental. Right. I'm talking about, right? You need something different there. Okay, so you, for a person to produce uh, defense technology, you need a guy who has, say, 10% knowledge of all technologies. Rather than having 100% knowledge of one technology. 
okay you should be able to understand it is just not understanding you should be able to see how they interact how they will click on the weapon system and how that weapon system will perform on ground am i complicated no so actually you know i am just trying to relate this with what we see in ukraine as well i mean that, that's a live war happening in front okay, of us okay yeah tell me your yeah, view what you've spoken about cyber and stuff like that we've seen it we've seen the advent of starlink we've seen precision attacks so all that you've covered and you've told us today is is something that is on display today we've yeah. seen these high high range uh, missiles going you know gps positioned uh, uh, shells being fired excalibur shells and stuff like that uh, how advent how easy it is to develop military technology looking at what is available in the civilian domain sir what i am asking you is how do you connect the civilian domain to this because all this is available within the civilian domain and a lot of us use this technology on a daily basis how do you yeah. use it for the military sir the history of warfare uh, and i won't say history of warfare our own history of science and warfare hmm see men fought for many purposes but men fought for the primal purpose of uh, survival and when they started doing that they started using technology which was available and they understood it that at that point mm-hmm. of time mm-hmm. as technology improved and technological inventions took place your weapon systems aligned themselves with the technology or those technology drove the weapon systems Correct. or the requirement of the battlefield drove the technology it's a uh, you know it's a evolutionary thing so there is a very intricate relationship between what is available in the civil and what is available in the uh, military for example the fundamental idea of a network right is absolutely organic and natural to the armed forces hmm see uh, let me put it i am an artillery officer so my the life blood of ensuring accurate fire is having good communication so we had a communication network where all the op officers were uh, op officers the guns and our commanders and our higher commanders and our neighboring units and the mm-hmm. infantry we were all networked and uh, know what's radio. happening yeah mm-hmm. everyone knew what was happening everyone was saying if a chap had to get into one to one communication he had to have the capability of getting out of that net and getting onto the other net mm-hmm. and then carrying out a private conversation and coming back we all we used to do it manually all this so instead of having doing all this manually now you're doing it digitally so instead of switching of clicking a switch getting off from one frequency to another frequency you are now doing it digitally and then you when you do it digitally you call it frequency hopping <laughs> i hope you understood no no right? no it's a, it's, it's as simple as daylight as simple as that, yeah mm-hmm. so the concept of a network was existent in the armed forces before it entered the you know civil infrastructure okay and that's how it is that's how it has grown so many of the technologies which you see today which are being applied in the civil world are an outflow of your requirement for example the propulsion technology propulsion technology was fundamentally required to exp- extend the range of you know the reach but that same propulsion technology is also used in space to send rockets to the moon Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you repurposed it or launch satellites. Okay, so all these are part of the deal. So that's how they get connected. So there is something called civil-military fusion, which takes place. And in advanced countries, this civil-military fusion has taken place long back. The question is like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I didn't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> both are there, and you have to deal with both. but so would you agree in a very hypothetical sort of a statement that uh, and it's a very crass thing to say i must say but 
wars actually develop technology faster yeah the system uh, you know the the pressure of uh, you know achieving victory through technology right forces you to adopt technology to battlefield hmm right and you have to use it and if you don't have the technology you need to come up with it okay so you are forced to innovate and you are forced to adopt these technologies at the earliest otherwise you will lose out now look at the extreme end. americans you say had the uh, techno nuclear technology right they used mm -hmm. it the use of this nuclear technology brought the end to the world war 2 and they won it hmm. if the others had it before they would have won okay a very simple i have given you an extreme thing so having some cutting edge technology which the enemy doesn't have always gives you that edge today what are those cutting edge technologies that's the important thing right and that is what actually i started the soul series with military technologies of this next century and that's what i spoke with general narayanan in the last uh, thing and let me go through so that you expl i explain to you how the connection is between this uh, environment specific technologies and the modern technologies which are coming in hmm. see these are the ones the 12 technologies i put i mean there are other technologies but these are to my way of looking at it these are the key technologies okay right now let's look at energy we spoke of energy battlefield we right in the in high altitude you need yeah, energy yeah. for many things so in this what happened in livermore lab fusion technology took place today it's in the scientific form 20 years later it will give you energy to power most of your systems so if that happens the way you do battle will change completely okay the same thing you know we spoke of ai we spoke of ai right uh let's look at this we spoke of ai in battlefield transparency we spoke of ai in precision you spoke of ai in networks in this right now this ai with quantum computing will redefine many things i am now connecting these key technologies and modern technologies as today you understand it as disruptive technologies yeah yeah with the battlefield okay right now you i mean you take anything from here and we will connect it back you look at precision you need space you need battlefield transparency you need space you need communications today you need space so in that context space is a very important technology and today who's the leader of space spacex <laughs> i hope you you getting it there is so a connection between the technology this. there's a connection mm. the person who can understand these connections right now let me get this off the slide we'll talk the person who can understand these connections who can see today's technology who can understand tomorrow's technology or visualize tomorrow's technology and see how can they can be put through how you can get them and then implement them in and apply them it's an applied technology applied science you apply it on the battlefield of your context will be the winner i think the last two words that you spoke not apart from the winner of course in your context is uh, yes, is most important. critical thing to remember because i mean I, i i as a layman i'd just like to say that the technology that might work on the plains of europe might not work in the himalayas in 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 india yeah in fact i put a shout out what is the best military technology the best military technology is that which will work for you for in you. your condition yeah 
so if a lower tech thing works for us first class gives us better result it, it is better than actually having a high tech thing which does not work yeah yeah i agree with you so yeah i think i think, I, I think you're okay Let you talk i'll listen <laughs> no sir i mean see i'm just as a layman i don't understand most of the stuff which is written there because propulsion okay fine i know it's energy you know it's 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 moving forward it's throwing something uh when you talk about positioning i know okay fine if there's an x somewhere that there's a bomb that needs to go on to that or there's a missile that needs to go on to that or there is a surveillance point that needs to be checked if there is an x somewhere that you need to send a drone or something like that to check what is happening there so i am looking at it at a very tertiary level and i am looking at only one factor that there is a a contextual ability of actually technology to help a certain military in a certain paradigm would be the most critical thing to do yeah i, I mean completely agree with you another thing which i want to point out is you don't need all technologies you don't yeah of course i was about to actually say that too. yeah tell you me yeah need, what is what you only view? need stuff that you need to use and uh, you should kind of if i may again uh, paraphrase like for example a lot of people talk about the northeast and uh, they say that there are a lot of infiltration and this and that why don't we use drones and take them up and kind of dish, dish wherever you see stuff but i mean this is something that again you've explained during one of our talks that the northeast jungles are so thick you yeah. can keep flying drones but the damn thing won't be able to see so in fact but, way back in uh, 2008 when i was commanding a brigade in the northeast i had drones and i used to fly them all over nothing yeah so it, it, it it's high tech but it doesn't work it doesn't work so you you need technology which works and it you need technology you can which you can afford i mean let me put it the best technology is one which works it is the cheapest which you can lay your hands on and which the enemy doesn't expect you to use the way you use it apart from that something that you can repair sir yeah of course you can maintain yeah, on that there's no doubt so you i mean i'll give you a example take iran does iran have any of these technologies it doesn't have many of these technologies no they don't have an air force but does anyone trifle with iran just so easily no no why because the technology which he has he uses very well the rocket force and the drones yeah look at pakistan pakistan doesn't have space its space technology is almost nil but does it mean that they can't uh... no no so it's that's i think i would i would call that as the lesson of the day because uh, i mean the the because the aero india is on so if i may just take an example there everybody is very excited of the f35 to come inside india <laughs> i mean yeah it's great beautiful technology nice to look at but it's not suited for us yep might not be might be might not be but you yeah. have to evaluate it and put it I mean, when when you evaluate it as a layman when i evaluate it with the factors that you've told me cost uh use uh variability maintainability and this and that it doesn't fit into most of the features so yeah, and it'll uh, see you have to take a call again there's a uh, thing would you I'm like one example yeah, it's yeah, not yeah yeah you're right would you like to have one of the best in your city or say Five of the next best, or twenty of the least best. Well, I'll do a paradigm pyramid. I'll take five of the sure. be- next best. Yeah. And then... So you have to have a mix. So you have to say, agree that you have to have a mix of technologies. Uh, you know, that's a different thing. I'll, uh, you know, how you handle technology. Yeah, we'll we'll probably talk about it later. We'll talk about this uh, later, but. we are not talking of how these technologies impact battlefields and thinking and battlefield and all that right 
So this is what I had to say. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to? Uh, Fantastic, clarify. sir. Because uh, I think the two bottom lines that have come out is what what is required by you is something that you need to work on. Work on. And the second thing is you can have high tech, but the if the other guy is completely low tech. Uh, yeah, like they know you, what happened with Taliban in USA. Uh, USA, yes, sir. Right. This fellow was using a completely different technology. They were using completely different technology, and the highest technology and the most technologically advanced force in the world, U.S. forces, were defeated by probably the more least technology-enabled forces. As they call chappal and moped. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, so, with no disregard, but that's how it is. That's how it is. You can derail technology by innovative use of technology. It is not as if the Taliban didn't use technology. If you think the Taliban didn't use technology, then we are off. They used technology very intelligently. Where what they had, what they had, what they had. So one has to be at that, right? I think. Uh... I mean, this is a great start to a basic, you know, introduction into military technology, where three, four things that you brought out, which is interesting, because uh, a lot of us kind of say that we don't have this, we don't have that, we don't have this. You don't need everything else. It's, it's yeah, you don't need everything. You need to, like I said, you don't need the best technology. You have to make use of the technology which you have. And what works for you? What works for you? Right. So. Right? What we'll do as we go along in this series, right? we'll see what are the technologies which will work for us? What are the technologies we have? What are the technologies which will work for us? And how to get hold of them? What do we need? What are the yeah, what do we need and what we don't have and how do you get? We don't need the best, but you definitely need something of somewhere. What we need, how we need, depends on your doctrine of fighting and all that, without going into all that. We'll work, look at the technologies because understanding these technologies, understanding the strengths which they give us, and understanding the weaknesses they come with. Because every technology comes with a penalty. And putting it in the right frame into a weapon system, and putting that weapon system in the right frame in the battlefield is actually military technology. Right. So, and that's what I intend to do in this uh, the uh, journey, which with all of you will make people understand. We'll make professionals understand. We'll make non-professionals understand as to what this is all about. That'll be great, sir. Good learning experience, and I think overall something yeah. for all of us. Yeah, we need to have this debate. And uh, with this, uh, we'll call it for the day. We'll call it, uh, we'll curtains down for the day and say uh, Jai Hind. Jai Hind, sir.